Taylor and Vicky Swans. <laughs> so, how you doing guys? I'm on some serious medication, that's the reason why I'm so weird today. I've got a massive head cold, so... Um, Psychedelic as we speak. <laughs> Why is there a table here? <laughs> Good gravy. The music stand. Oh, God, it's going. Um, so, hey, well, I'm tired. So we're all going to take a 10 or 15 minute nap. <laughs> Use you as a pillow, did you just say? <laughs> Good God. Why are you on your own in there? That's really scary. Hey, she doesn't be, want to be anywhere near you, and the next person on the line has 20 feet. <laughs> did you do something bad? Um, did you shower like today? <laughs> okay, fair enough. They might be afraid of me. Could be. What's your question? Um, I just want to know what your favorite dinosaur is. My favorite dinosaur? <laughs> changes. Hmm? It changes. Okay. It does change, yeah, it does change. I mean, when I was little, probably sort of the, you know, the, the brontosaurus, uh, Diplodocus sort of area of dinosaurs, large. Stegosaurus is pretty cool. Which? Stegosaurus, okay. Stegosaurus, yeah. pretty cool. Triceratops, not too, not too weird. Um, but you know, I really wasn't impressed with the, you know, the raptor kind of bullshit. I thought they were just making stuff up. <laughs> well, I mean, we're gonna find out those bastards had feathers at some point. <laughs> What's your favorite dinosaur? Um, uh, Parasaurolophus. Hmm? Uh, Parasaurolophus with the. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> um, with the hat and the. Oh yeah, the weird one. Yeah, the weird one. <laughs> Looks like Jim Beaver. <laughs> You do? Okay. He's my favorite dinosaur. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. What? Hi. Right now, probably. <laughs> Robert Tussin. Robert. Um, do you want to hear my question? Yeah, I think they want to hear it too. So you can <laughs> microphone close to your face. Why is it in your hand? Why is your, why is the microphone in your hand? Oh, because I'm asking questions. Put it back. <laughs> it's not yours. Put it back. I don't know that. No, put it back in, put it back in the clip. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah? No. I'll move on. <laughs> I can't. Put it back. <laughs> I have children. <laughs> why did you need to pick the microphone up? No, just walk up to the talk. She's new. <laughs> um, my question is... See how much easier it is? It's not easier. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so, how you doing? Still want to play? <laughs> question? What made you start acting, like wanting to start acting? I don't know. <laughs> Do you want to act? No, nah, not really. <laughs> like, did you have any major influences? Probably. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Were they? Uh, can't remember so long ago. <laughs> Brontosauruses. <laughs> Other dinosaurs. Damn. Is that it? Cool. Hi. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if you could play any other character on the show, who would it be? Wouldn't. <laughs> Why? What? Why? Why would you want me to play another character? <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> Why would I want to play somebody else? You're saying I didn't do what I did well? What's your problem? You don't like me? What's the problem? Didn't think that one through, did you? Ah, uh, 
youth, wasted on the young. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for playing. What do you want? <laughs> Take it. Thank you for being you. And I have a question. What's your um, country of origin? My country of origin? Why? Your accent. My accent? Where's my accent from? Yes, please. Where's my accent from? Uh, where, what's your country of origin? Where were you born? Why? <laughs> Bloody money. nosy. Are you Canadian? Yes. <laughs> That's why. Canadians are way too polite to ask questions like that. Where are you from? Uh, Pennsylvania. From Pennsylvania? Mm -hmm. All you need to know is I'm an American. Calling me old? <laughs> yes, I am. I'm still I, young. I have the gray hairs too, so uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> what did you want to be when you grew up? And I don't know, I haven't grown up yet. What <laughs> your role as Crowley fulfilled that dream? No. No. I'm but not you're Crowley. The king. You're the king. I'm not the king. Crowley's the king. Well, does Crowley fulfill my goals of what I wanted to be when I grew up? No. No, not really. Um, Part of it, I guess, but it's not the thing. Why? What did you want to be when you grew up? Oh, I wanted to be a nurse. How's that going? I'm a director of a nursing program. That's pretty good. Yeah. There you go. That's drive and ambition for you. Good thing. Hi. Hi. What do you want? Oh. I was just wondering, what's your favorite Crowley quote? I don't know, what's yours? <laughs> I'll get back to you in a minute. <laughs> what do you want? Stay there. What do you want? Uh, my question is, what's your favorite part about playing Crowley? What's, my fa what's your favorite part about me playing Crowley? <laughs> Wait a second, think about it. <laughs> Mine's probably, I deserve to be loved. Why? It wasn't funny, I was crying. <laughs> serious. You were laughing at me when I was having a serious time? What the hell's wrong with you? You think I'm there just for your cheap fun? Yeah. Stay there. You got an answer yet? Nope. You don't know what... What's your favourite part about me playing Crowley? Your sarcasm. My sarcasm? Really? <laughs> And that's all you could come up with. What about the rest of the speech? Pardon? What about the rest of the speech? That's the main part that stuck out. <laughs> all this work, all this time. <laughs> Just an object of derision. Aww. So. We good? See, do you hear this? She's talking about her favourite parts of me playing ground. Have a listen. When you point it out, it'll work out really well. Go on. Or do you, like, is there, like, a huge, like, massive, like, one hour, like, I am Crowley, I am King of Hell. <laughs> Sorry, I missed all that. I was talking. What's that? What was the point again? How do you get, like, into, like, the Crowley mode kind of thing? How do I get into Crowley mode? Yeah. <laughs> Listen to the idiots around me. <laughs> it's like scratching an itch. Really? That's pretty much how it happens. You just listen to them talk. 
Come up with anything better? <coughs> Come on, give it a try. What do you? What is your favourite part about the way I play Crowley? No idea. Do you like the fact that he's such a snappy dresser? Do you like the fact that he has such a way with words? Do you like the fact that the Winchesters love him more than anybody else? saves their life on a constant basis. He's actually so good to them even when he doesn't need to be. He's such a kind and benevolent dictator that he always puts everybody else ahead of himself. Just a few ideas. No? No? Fine, go sit down then. You done? Thanks. Hey, Matt. How you doing? Pretty good. Good to see you. Our esteemed sound person, Matt. Hey, y'all. Hi. Who on earth let you leave the house dressed like that? <laughs> My mom. What, is, what the hell is wrong with her? I don't know. You can ask her. Is she a good black suit with a grey tie? <coughs> or look like a downtown park flasher. Alright. Maybe in the trench coat. What do you want? Who's like more ridiculous to work with, Jared or Misha? It's interesting you pick those two because you know that, that Jensen is not ridiculous to work with. I think Jared's worse. Oh, absolutely. Uh, ridiculous in what context? Like, exasperating. Exasperating? Yeah. About equal, actually, you really think about it. <laughs> no, Jared. Is it because he's tall? What? Is it because he's super tall? Did you just call me small? <laughs> <laughs> is it because he's like really tall? Because that annoys me too. Yeah, it kind of bugs anybody. I, I've never been the shortest actor on set in my life. And on this show, I was definitely the shortest actor on set. I'm the shortest everywhere, so it's okay. And, uh, well, that can change. Thank you. <laughs> you don't have a microphone. Hi. Hi. Um, so, are you going to be mad if I call you my king? Yes. Okay, so you were saying you're not Crowley, and Crowley's the king. I'm not Crowley. Okay. My king. <laughs> uh, so I got a question about um, Isabel. So apparently she's Who? really lovely. Isabel, your daughter? Who's Isabel? I have a daughter called Isabella. Sorry? Isabella. Yeah, Isabella. Sorry. I, yeah. I used to call you Isabella. Is that my name is not Ma? <laughs> no, Ma. Okay, so um, she's lovely. And is there any like funny story or something that's really cute about she and your music? Like some story you can share with? She dances all the time. Like, the, have you tried to help, to try to teach her with like the drums or something like that? She plays drums. She plays drums all the time. She uh, plays drums, she sings. It's a good time. She's only 19 months old. <laughs> but she, she's very serious about music. She loves music. Okay. I was playing her Robin Hitchcock song the other day that we were working on and she was singing the last word of every line along with the line. Aww. So, it's kind of cool. That's she lovely. Likes it. Yeah, she loves music. Yep. She said the interesting thing now, because she runs around, she's got a big head because she's a baby. <laughs> and she, her arm goes out and she uses her head to go around corners. <laughs> <laughs> she uses it for ballast, I think. <laughs> Thank you, and we love your sarcasm. Oh. Thank you, my king. <laughs> Hi. Um, so I have a question, and it would be, I try to explain your character to my friend who doesn't watch the show, and she keeps This is gonna take a while. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, I swear, it's gonna be fast. And she calls you the traffic light demon, so instead of like King or Crowley, and I was wondering if you could pick another name that wasn't King or Crowley for your character that would be kind of funny, what would you pick? Thanks. Okay. Very funny.
funny. <laughs> By the way, I'm the one that gets to judge that, trust me. Hey, I was wondering why... Excuse me? Is that a complaint or a question? Hey, I'm over here right now, what? I was wondering why you Ooh, think... forceful. You're Canadian, aren't you? Very. Yeah. yeah. Why do you think Crowley has such a huge change of heart? I mean, he was a king of hell, and then he sacrificed himself for the great of the world. No idea. <laughs> no thoughts? None. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, though. Yeah. <laughs> Quick fire round, go! Hi. Hi. <laughs> what was it about Dean that Crowley responded to so much differently than Sam? He always had such an antagonistic relationship with Sam, but Dean, there was an emotional connection. I'm wondering what you think of that. It's funny because you're sort of asking me questions that, that attach to the way you feel about something. They don't necessarily attach to the way I feel about something. Does that make sense? I'm thinking about your character and the way he comes off. No, I understand it, but it's, but it's you're thinking about what you feel. It's interesting, it's, it's a fascinating thing. It, it, it's a sign of probably doing something right, is that when you, when you create something as part of a story, and you make something as part of a story, its dynamic becomes a, a thing of its own. It becomes organic, it becomes sort of real, even though it's truly living truthfully under imaginary circumstances. It is kind of real. And what's fascinating to me is to hear what other people project to what it is that we do. It, it has emotional context that isn't necessarily our emotional context. Does that make sense? Although those elements are there. Well, there was the famous quote from someone else you worked with. Joss Whedon once said, art is like your child. It grows up and talks back to you. What is? Art is like your child. It grows up and talks back to you. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of wanky because you, well, you, you, you kind of spend twenty. So what? You spend twenty-five minutes in front of a, a Van Gogh picture. You don't go art is like a child that grows up and talks back to you. you um, no, not at all. That's kind of if you're sort of a bit more self-indulgent, I imagine. Uh, no, it's not. It's things. I don't agree with that at all. I think. You don't always know the relevancy of what it is that you're doing until it's done. And the relevancy is not all the same to all people. And that's when you know you've done something good. The worst type of, the worst type of art dictates what you should feel about it. The worst type of art dictates your emotional uh, prerequisite for, for observing it or understanding it. You're going to cry at this because this is, this is sad. It doesn't work for me, never, done, never did work for me. That's why there's a lot of film directors while well, rather brilliant, are very good at dictating what it is you think they think you're supposed to be feeling. And the ones that really fascinate me are the ones that don't dictate anything. They just leave you wide open. And you, you find your own experiences in it. And I think what a testament to, to the actors that I've worked with on, on Supernatural, and it pretty much goes across the board. There's very few actors. I mean, that's everybody from, you know, everyone I've ever done a scene with, I can think of has shown up and tried to make something as real as it possibly can be. I mean, it's ridiculous to think of the context of, of you know, Rob as God and me as the king of hell having a conversation about something. It doesn't make sense. But in the world that we're in, it makes sense. And the reality of it has to make sense to us. And it has to make sense in the canon. So it's, it's, a, very, it's a very subjective thing. But it's done right. It becomes... Um, a lot more things than the sum of its parts. Does that make sense? Yeah. But I think it's a common thread in Supernatural, which is there's an honesty to a lot of uh, um, the performances. It doesn't matter. I've, I've been fascinated by some some of the people. The guy, Viv Leacock, who played my um, my assistant, um, Gerald. He's, I think he's now in. Uh, he's now he's now in uh, Dirk Gently. And it's just, it was just this fabulous way he had of playing the simplest things. You know, nobody cares, Gerald, was that, that moment when he was talking about being burned by his mother with cigarettes or something. And Crowley was like, yeah, whatever, we're talking about me. But it was, it was such a ridiculously brilliant, simplistic empathy to what it was that he was doing. 
And it, it happens a lot. It happens a lot on that show because a lot of people are very committed to what it is that they do. When you watch Curtis and you watch, you know, every, there's no, there are no exceptions, you know. Spain, everybody. I've seen everybody's work on the show. I've seen everybody that's here's work on the show. And there's an honesty to everything that it is they do. And if they don't bring that, it doesn't really float. It doesn't really fly. So the art is what the art is. Its meaning varies. Its meaning changes with time, I guess. Maybe that's what Joss meant. But I don't know that it grows up as much as we grow up and see it differently, maybe. That might be the, the consequence of it, is that we come from a different place and begin to understand how lucky we were to participate in it and be a part of it in a very different way than we thought it would. <sighs> then we thought of its meaning when we started. And the most complicated answer I could give you. <laughs> that was actually perfect. Thank okay. you so Thank you. much. Kind of feel stupid now after that big long speech. Don't feel stupid. And, but, <laughs> and. but my question was do you think Crowley wanted to be part of the Winchester family, sort of how like Cass was? I think he was part of the Winchester family. <laughs> stopped talking about him. How they were friends. Like they never stopped talking about him. They never stopped calling him. They never stopped using him. <laughs> he never stopped helping them. It doesn't make sense. I have a theory that, that um, in some ways, I was wondering why there was a longevity to, to characters that were written as, as uh, not really to have that longevity. The story's always been about the brothers. But what I think is fascinating is that I think the audience has always lived a little vicariously through Castiel and Crowley. It's like, because of our love for the Winchesters, the audience gets to sort of associate with that. So you guys get to live a little vicariously through our connection to them, which has always, I think, been fascinating in that way. I think it was a really interesting dynamic for eight years, you know? And with all changes and with all shows, you know, changes usually for the best, you know, things stagnate, I think my story definitely stagnated by 12, it was like, I was doing the same episode over and over again in season 12, and it's always been interesting on this show that whenever there's been a reboot, like season 6, season 8, um, there have been big changes, and the changes have been very positive in that way, do you know what I'm saying? It's always led to something really good, so I'm happy to say that what I did made the sense that it made, and, and means what it means. We'll always be part of it. But, um, you know, it'd be nice to see what the change is and see if the dynamic changes in that way. You Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so, my question is, um, we all know how Crowley calls Sam and Dean Moves and Squirrel. If Sam and Dean would give Crowley a name from an animal, what do you think it would be? Huh. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be, it'd be Boris. <laughs> so, that comes from Rocky and Bullwinkle, so... It's not Moose and Squirrel, it's just... It's just a coincidence that... I mean, Jensen doesn't bear any relationship to a squirrel at all. <laughs> but Jared absolutely bears a resemblance to a moose. <laughs> You're Canadians and you should know that. <laughs> with stiff legs with this big torso. <laughs> and the right heart, height for cars to drive into it. <laughs> um, he's got his stiff legs and body. So he's a moose. Then of course it's moose and squirrel because of Bar and then moose and squirrel and bars and Natasha, because that's part of the thing. It has nothing to do with actual animals. It's not moose, squirrel, turkey and, <laughs> and beaver. <laughs> quite work. Thank you for playing. <laughs> what? Hi, um, I didn't take it as a change of heart on Crowley's part. 
I thought he was just thrown in the towel and was prepared to do anything to drag Lucifer down with him. Uh, that's just my take on it. Cool. But uh, what I was going to ask is about uh, this alternate dimension. Do you think Crowley will make an appearance as somewhat a different no. character? No. Aww. Oh, for God's sakes. <laughs> What well, part of I'm done did you not get? <laughs> so, no, it's, there, there are no plans to have me included in, in any further okay. stuff. Much as you guys keep trying. Mm -hmm. It's like because some of you haven't come, caught up and actually watched the end of season 12 yet. Um, no, there are no plans to, to bring me back at any juncture. Okay. Some of the interviews that were done, I think, that were done in... July would have been done at, at Comic Con. Like, there's a whole bunch of stuff that will be coming out recently. So it would have been people's opinions of things in July and not people's opinions of things in October. So it tends to be the press was all done together in that way. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought it was very clear. Somebody made a, an erroneous statement about sort of never say never. I thought it had to be very clear to make sure that you guys didn't think it was some sort of ploy or game because we've been, we've done it a few times. We've killed me off for. So they're going to kill me off a whole bunch of times. And, and I don't think it was particularly fair to tell everybody, you never know, because, you know, it's, I don't think you can do it that way. Um, so, yeah, it's also, I don't, know, I don't know, in some ways, looking back, I would have been a lot happier with just being dead in 21. <laughs> some of it would have been a lot simpler. Uh, There's bits that don't sort of make a lot of sense. I didn't spark out in 21, and, and that sort of stuff didn't make a lot of sense. But... You know what? It's done. It's fine. It's 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 time for the next for the next incarnation. They replaced me. They replaced me. There was some weird uh, there's some weird language in there. I don't know whether they, they'll recreate my character, but there's no plans for me to go and do anything. So so, uh, but I appreciate the thought. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Which person do you think you do the best impression of? Uh, I don't. I really don't. So can you do any impressions of them? Well, I can do one of the moves. Go on then. Hi. <laughs> Afterlife screwing him over. Why did he keep trusting her and working with her? Well, she didn't spend her life screwing Crowley over. She spent her life screwing Fergus over. And this is the problem. No, there's a big difference. Fergus is not Crowley. Fergus is the person who sold his soul. The soul for three inches of a little redhead. <laughs> skinny, short guy who needed three inches extra penis. Crowley, <laughs> Crowley is not the same person. Crowley is a, uh, uh, a New York uh, publisher. The, it's, it's always been so amazingly confusing the, that it runs into suddenly Fergus is Crowley and therefore it never made any sense to me in the first place. But uh, um, I guess the the way that I solve the problem of the fact that it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever that a demon has human feelings about the original soul that was before it was demonized is that with the advent of season eight and the human blood element that the surface was scratched somewhat and that there was some part of it that was visible. But what I really think I played was that Crowley, Rowena was the replacement for the absence of a mother. Everybody else had a mother, why shouldn't he? 
So he tended to behave as though it was it was something he was cheated out of rather than uh, something he particularly cared about. And so when we got to the end of 23, I told Andrew I wanted to put the line in uh, when they said she's dead. And I'm like, yeah, really? Because she's died like five times in the last season. Um, I'm like, yeah, really? I'm like, Lucifer. I'm like, she's dead. Like, really dead? Dead. Yeah, dead. That was my impression. And my response would be, funny, I always thought it would be me that killed her. As a genuine statement. To which he went, that's weird. And he was like, that is so strange. I'm like, it's actually accurate, it's factually correct. I always thought it would have been me that killed her. It could have been my job. Because she was the pain in my ass. <laughs> it's, it's an odd thing. It's just like, a, and I, think, I think Crowley looks at Rowena as the absence of a mother. But why couldn't he have something? Because he doesn't really want to do what he's doing. He didn't really want to be part of what he was being part of. But it has very little to do with Fergus. I don't think Crowley gave a damn about Fergus. It's a sort of annoyance. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank you. There you go. Way too short. <laughs> yes. 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 I agree. Um, That's the answer. <laughs> Crowley described it as a summer of love and made mention of a Flickr photo album. What sort of photos do you think might have been? Well, you saw one of them. You saw the beer one. That was funny. We both looked at each other and went, Jim Michaels? Like, yep. <laughs> Every one of Jim Michaels' photographs for about three years on Instagram, as this face. <laughs> so we are something to that face. So that's stuck. But yeah, that's what it would look like. Bunch of weirds. I love the football game. I thought it was really good. The whole thing. It was a fun thing to do. I just think, I don't know. It's a, it was an odd year. It would have been so cool to go on another three or four episodes, I think. It would have been really interesting. But, you know, there's, there's reasons for it. And it was a bit... It was a bit Provocative, I guess. You know? But it was fun for me. I enjoyed it. Hey, how you doing, Liz? Oh, hi. Um, I have my question's kind of random, but I was wondering if there's any, like, weird food combinations you enjoy. Any what? Weird food combinations. Weird food combinations that I like? Yeah. Like, for example, like, I kind of like Nutella and bacon, and people make fun of me for that. Like, Nutella and have... chocolate bacon is very normal. It's very odd. So, like, do you no, have something odd. like that? They make no? chocolate covered bacon, you know. Do they? Yes. I didn't even know that. No. <laughs> it's people in Canada, they put maple, maple on anything. 